Welcome to the registration tutorial for Quarantune 4.0. These workshops are going to be taking place on June 4th and 5th. The festival itself is taking place the 3rd through the 6th with other activities. This video, however, is just to show you how to register for your workshops. Registration opens on Sunday, May 2nd at 4 p.m. Eastern and 3 p.m. Central Time. So I am on the homepage of our website from here. You can see up in the top of the page, there is a button that says registration prep. There's also a navigation menu and you might find that it's kind of hard to hover over. Um, but if you can get hovering over registration, you'll also be able to get to that same page. So um, the other thing that you want to make note of, if you are on a mobile device or a tablet that has a little bit smaller screen, all of this stuff at the top of the page might show up under two little black lines up in the top right corner and in order to get to the registration you'll actually have to go to um, those two black lines click them and then all of these links are going to show up for you there when registration opens this is going to change to say register however it's all the same link um, so i'm going to go ahead and click it here now I'm actually on the registration page. If I clicked it here, it doesn't seem like anything changed because it's also the registration page. From here, I can also go to the search page and I can go directly to the instruments. So if I go to that registration page here, scroll down, here's the instruments, all the other instruments, mountain dulcimer, hammer dulcimer. I can reach those from these links as well. Once you're at the registration page, you can read through these tips here. And we also have a link to the important disclosures. We also have a link to the checkout, just in case for some reason you're unable to locate the shopping cart icon at the top of your page. As you scroll down, you're gonna see the links to the hammered dulcimer workshops, the mountain dulcimer workshops, and all other instrument workshops. Those are also available under that navigation link that's at the top of the screen. Another thing that's available on this page that's also available in the navigation link is the search bar. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to use this search bar real quick. If you're interested in workshops by a specific instructor, you can type that instructor's name. I'm just going to use Bing and it's going to search the website and it'll show you all of his workshops. Another thing you can do with the search panel that's kind of cool, if you haven't necessarily planned ahead and you're interested for example, in workshops on one and a half fret. Obviously people type it differently, but I just type 1.5. Let's see what comes up. There's four workshops that say 1.5 and they're talking about the one and a half fret. You might type that differently. Maybe I'm looking for a you know niche workshop on dampers. I can type in damper and see what pops up. So this just shows you that you can search for specific topics. This is going to pull up any workshop that has the word damper in the title or the description. So that might be an interesting thing for you to look at to find kind of, you know, interesting topics that were hard to locate in the grid or the workshop descriptions. Look at all these workshops that include uh, singing. Right, so kind of neat. But if you know what you're looking for, just come down to the bottom and you can go ahead and click any of these links to take you to those pages. I just clicked the hammered dulcimer link and now I'm on the page if I scroll down for all the hammered dulcimer workshops. Now, if I'm on this main page just for all the hammered dulcimer workshops, it is literally going to show me every single hammered dulcimer workshop. Uh, so you don't really want to just search from this page. What you want to do is use these categories at the top. The categories are arranged by level. So I can click absolute beginner, level two novice, level three intermediate. So I'm going to go ahead and just start adding things to my cart and get this show on the road. If I click absolute beginner, now I have only the level one workshops. So let's go ahead and start adding. I'm gonna recommend adding these items to your cart in chronological order, starting with Friday session one and ending with Saturday session eight. However many workshops you choose to you know, purchase is up to you, but that's gonna make it easier for you to look at your order confirmation and derive your schedule, plan yourself, you know, so I like this workshop. I'm going to click add to cart. Watch what happens when I click add to cart. It says adding, added, and then it switches back to add to cart, right? So just watch out for that. Don't click add to cart twice 
don't change the quantity here don't start you know fussing with that the limit is one if you purchase more than one you're going to be charged for more than one but you're only going to get admission for one so definitely only purchase one at a time if you want to purchase for a friend just go back and place a second order so i can go back to that hammer dulcimer page a few different ways i can go up to the navigation and hover over it's not on this page but you already saw that um, hover down to hammer dulcimers and click that i can go back to the registration page scroll down and go to hammer dulcimers i can click the back button in my browser to go back to the page that i was just on or i can go to this little link right here these little breadcrumbs this is going to take me back to all of the hammer dulcimer workshops and I can click absolute beginner again to go find some more workshops. I'm just going to add them in chronological order here. Um, I think that added. Now the other thing that you can do, you can use the back button. That's going to eliminate the need to reselect your level. It brings me right back to the level one category that I was in. So go ahead and add some more just so that we have something to double check later. Now, if you do want to choose from a different level, say you want to, you know, expand your horizons a little bit and go outside the level that you feel like you fit the best, nothing wrong with that at all. You're always going to learn something new. Um, you can do that. So I just went into level two. I'm going to grab something in the level two section here. Um, I'm going to go back and find something let's go into the non-level specific and I'll just grab Friday session five all right so you can also obviously choose as many instruments as you'd like I've only been looking at the hammered dulcimers so if you go back to that um, registration page you can click any of those other links I'm gonna go here to the <laughs> not that um, to the all instruments page Mountain dulcimer looks exactly like hammer dulcimer. It's arranged in the exact same levels. So I'm not going to show that. But uh, all instruments, these categories are a little bit different. Instead of levels, we have them arranged by instrument. So you'll be able to select any of the instruments that you are you know, inter interested in. So we have a new section that's all instrument, meaning anybody can take these workshops. So I wish I wasn't teaching Saturday session three. <laughs> going to add this copyright workshop to my cart. Anyways, I feel like I've added a whole bunch of workshops so I can start actually checking my cart. Um, and in order to do that, I can do a couple things. The easiest thing for me to do is to just come right up here to this shopping cart icon at the top of my screen. From this registration page, there's a big blue box here that says click here to check out. So if for some reason you can't find the shopping cart or it's underneath something, I don't know, it can get wonky. Um, you can click the big blue register button. It's going to take you to this registration page. And then you can click here to check out. They're both going to go to the exact same place. So now I'm in my shopping cart. Go ahead and just click check out. Skip this page altogether if you want. Um, and from here, it's much easier for me to double check the items in my cart. Here's how to check the items in your cart. Um, if you have something that you just flat out know you don't want, like this item here, this was just some junk that I had in there from before. I'm going to click remove right below that um, little quantity box and now it's gone. Something you want to look for, quantity of two. Really, really easy to spot guys. It's right here. It says two. It should not say two. That should say one. So I just highlight that and I can type in a one. I can put my cursor in there. I can delete the two and call it a one. I don't want to click remove because it will remove both of them, but I definitely want that quantity of two to become a one. And now I'm all set. Um, the other thing you want to watch out for are multiple workshops happening at the same time. And this is why we color coat these. Um, it's really easy to spot if you've got two yellow guys. You know, I might even want to double check and make sure that says Saturday and has some stripes in it. Um, both of these Friday workshops, say Friday session three, big red flag. I got to remove one of them. So easy enough to do. Just click remove on one of them. Figure out which one you want to take and remove the other one. Click remove. There you go. Um, so after you've done all of that, you know that you don't have any mistakes in your cart, then you can go ahead and check out. 
Um, if you do check out with mistakes in your cart, again, you're going to want to review the important disclosures. You're going to be required to say that you understand them before you check out. And unfortunately, we won't be able to issue any refunds on those mistakes, but we will put them back into inventory for somebody else to have. Okay, I'm just going to show you a few different ways to check out and some things that you might experience during checkout. If you don't have an account, you're going to come to this page and it'll probably look like this. Uh, it won't even have an email address in there. It's just going to say email. And here's what you do. You enter your email. You do not sign into account because you don't have one. If you don't know if you have an account, just act like you don't have an account. Don't even, don't question it. It's too late to fuss with that now. Just check out as a guest. So I'm going to enter my email address as a guest, right? And then I would hit continue. However, if you do have an account, you might already be logged in. That's awesome. That's kind of where I was when I first got to this page. But if you're not logged in, you can always click sign in. And remember, your account password has all the fancy stuff, capital, lowercase, um, number, special character. Let's see if I could type it right while I was talking. Okay, so I'm signing into my account. And now it just says your account and this is my account email address. You cannot change your email address. If you have an issue with your email address on your account, you just have to create a new account. So now that I'm logged in, I can continue on to the next step. If you checked out as a guest, you would automatically just continue on to the next step. You wouldn't have to do any of this. So the next step is step two. I want to click that I understand the important disclosures. You're required to acknowledge that you understand them. That is linked in several places on the website. Then you click continue. All right, so now we're on to the payment method. If you have a payment method, if you have an account and you have registered a payment method in advance, then you can just go ahead and use that. That's what I'm gonna do here. If you don't have a payment method, you can always add a new payment method. If you are checking out as a guest, it's just like ordering anything online. You just enter your credit card information. Even if you think you've got it registered in advance, just go ahead and have your credit card handy in case something weird happens and you, I don't know, technology's crazy, right? So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and just leave that alone and click continue because my address is already set up because I have an account. Um, one of the benefits of having one, if you, again, if you're checking out as a guest, make sure you enter all of your billing information and your um, zip code and everything correctly. I'm going to hit continue. Now the next step is to review and purchase. I'm just going to click purchase. Now we're completing. And this page, very important. You need to get to this page in order to know that you've actually placed your order. So it says my order is confirmed. You can write down this little number. Main thing you want to check is, especially if you checked out as a guest, this email address is this the email address that you you know wanted stuff to go to did you fat finger your email address and this is incorrect if so you need to contact us um the next step for you would be to go and check your email get that order confirmation do not delete it so i'm going to show you how to check out with paypal when i toggle this on I, now i have to enter my address now i have it in autofill so i'm just going to leave that alone it added some kind of, I don't know why it put a something up in the discount code field. If something like that happens, just delete it. Make sure your address is correct and click pay with PayPal. Now this is going to take me to PayPal and I have to log in. I happen to already be logged in, but you'll just enter your PayPal email address and password and that's it. And then you hit continue. It says processing connecting to PayPal, and then it went away. You're not done. You still have to click purchase on our website. Once again, you need to wind up coming to this um, next page. It's going to pop up here. Here we go. You need an order confirmation, right? Say you get to this page and you're ready to check out. And I'm going to go ahead and just go through that whole process again. Um, I've already signed into my account, checked the important disclosures. I'm going to go ahead and use my credit card since it's already in here. Um, when I hit continue, I knew that there was a low stock on that item, right? It was only two of them left. So I'm going to hit continue. 
I'm gonna hit purchase. Now all of a sudden this red box is popping up saying the tutorial item is no longer available. So the item that I had in my cart, it's not there anymore. That means it sold out while I was getting to this point. This is probably gonna happen to a lot of you right when registration opens. And it might not even look like it's low in stock at first and by the time you get to checkout, it actually has sold out. If you've got a bunch of other stuff in your cart, what you would wanna do is go ahead and remove the item that's sold out and then click purchase, at least buy the stuff that's not sold out. Then you can go back later and look for an item to fill that time slot that you, you know, that you weren't able to purchase your workshop for. Another thing that could happen, you might hit purchase and some red alert shows up somewhere else telling you that there's an issue with that section of your checkout. So that can happen as well. And usually it'll kind of tell you what you need to do. If there's some weird, bizarre thing happening and it's just, you absolutely cannot figure out why it won't go through, then you can contact us and we'll try and help you out that way.